everyone to Hope Church. Take this time to say hello to those sitting next to you or maybe behind you. Kind of give them a wave, a high five, or hi. Hello. Again, it does feel odd here without all the teachers and kids. Normally, it's like so filled with all the young ones and our teachers and volunteers, but all right. Welcome, everyone. Announcements. We've been announcing this for quite a while now. The outdoor, our annual outdoor worship and picnic is next Sunday. I've been checking the weather every single day. And I'd like to report that the weather looks good. The weather looks good, you guys. So let's continue to pray that it stays good. Um, it's supposed to be, I think, 82 degrees, and it's going to be um, sunny with a few clouds. That's going to be perfect. So it's not, you know, too sunny and too bright, but there'll be a few clouds. No rain in the forecast. So please continue to pray because, you know, the weather could change and stuff. But according to the weather app, <laughs> which is what I look at, no, it's the weather channel app. Uh, good weather for next Sunday, but let's continue to pray pray for that. Um, as it says, it's going to be at 11 o'clock, folks. So I know y'all are used to getting up late and rolling in here um, for the one o'clock service, but please, you need to get up even earlier and make your way directly to the North Laurel Community Center. Guess what? It's in Laurel. It's called the North Laurel Community Center. And meet there by 11 o'clock. We're going to have outdoor worship service. And the kids are going to be separately um, have their time as well. And then we're going to have food for everyone. You don't have to bring your own. It's not potluck. Uh, we'll have food. We'll have games for everyone as well. And as you can see, you can bring, um, you know, the blankets and lawn chairs, games, balls, uh, frisbees, bikes, and things like that for the kids. There's a skate park right next door. If you get there, the North Laurel Community Center. We're not inside the building there. There's a big parking lot, and then you'll see us on the back of the parking lot. There's a grassy field, and you'll see a pavilion. We've actually rented the pavilion. So don't go in the building looking for us. Look in the parking lot, behind the parking lot, and there's a pavilion outdoor with a grill and a grassy field. So we will see you there 11 o'clock next Sunday. All right, house church has begun. Woo! All right, this is something we've been planning, preparing, and praying for, the three Ps. And we all met last Friday. We're super excited to have launched and kicked it off. Uh, the reports are that it was good. Many attended. There was delicious food. I'm hearing menus such as prime rib and um, kalbi jim and all kinds of things, right? So it was really, really good. Um, just wanted to let you guys know it happens every single Friday night, meeting in various people's homes in Montgomery County as well as in Howard County. If you have not joined a house church yet, it is not too late. It's never too late. Come and see me, okay? You guys have to, don't just show up at a house church, but come see me, talk with me, and I will get you situated to a house church. So come, talk with me. All right, the Living Bible, uh, the Living Life, LLBS. People keep seeing the LLBS and wondering what that stands for. It's Living Life Bible Study. So LLBS has begun in terms of the registration is open. You can register through the Church Center app. You know how you guys give offering? If you look in your Church Center app on your phones, there's a thing that says join. If you click on that, you will see LLBS show up, and you can register through there. Or you can register um, online as well. Is it on our website? Is there like a... There is a link on our website, and you should have received an email from Pastor Q about it. So there's many ways to register. How many people do we have so far? Wow, 17 people have registered so far. I don't think there's a cap on it, so you're welcome. This is for everyone. We wanted to clarify. It's not just for shepherds, not just for deacons and elders. It's for everyone, all of us, okay? So it's for 13 weeks. Dinner is included every Monday night here in this building downstairs. Pastor Q will be leading and teaching. Um, I know that some, it says something like, you'll come and you will receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Um, it's going to go through all the basics. It's like a systematic theology. So we will talk about how, it, how is one sure of their salvation. And if you haven't received Jesus Christ, how can you receive Jesus Christ? So things like that, it doesn't mean that it's for non-Christians to come and receive Jesus. Is that clear? So please come. It's going to be an excellent, excellent 
probably the most important class you take at Hope Church. I'll be here every Monday, not teaching, but sitting in, you guys. So join us Monday evening. We start on 919. So it's the Monday right after our picnic, right after the outdoor service. So hopefully, if you have any questions, see Pastor Q. He has all the answers. All right. Now, this next announcement might be, uh, come as a total shock to y'all, but here we go. We are changing our service time. It's big news. I know, I know, right? Right? Hang on to your seats. Starting in October, starting in the month of October, the first Sunday of October, which is October 2nd, we are going to start worship at 1215. I know that's a weird time, right? Right now we start at 1 o'clock, but we are switching to 1215. 1215. Mark it on your calendars. It will go out as Hope News. We'll, um, we'll spam all your Google calendars with the new time. <laughs> but yes, 1215. Just remember, starting here, 1215 in October. We'll keep reminding you guys. But yes, so we'll start early, and of course that means that we end earlier. So you get out of here uh, earlier as well for the rest of your Sundays. All right. Uh, at this time, we will have offering. You can give, again, through the Church Center app as well as coming up here to give um, physically or you could even mail us checks if you're at home worshiping with us virtually. So let's take time to give our offerings to the Lord. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you are so good and you are such a good provider to all of us, God, that we overflow with your blessings and the joy, God, that is in our lives because of you and what you have done. So, Father, we just come before you and we come and we lift up this offering that it will be used for your kingdom purposes, God. Father, those who make the decisions of finances over the church, would you grant them wisdom and discernment, Father, to guide us. We pray for those who are sick among us, God, those who are suffering from COVID, uh, who are battling cancer, other infections, diseases, and illness. Father, we say no to those diseases, and we ask, God, for just a supernatural healing for your presence to come and touch each one of them, Lord, and to bring quick relief, Father, from health challenges, as well as mental challenges, God, and emotional as well. Father, we just ask for um, prayers and protection over our missions partners, especially this month for Dustin and Holly Garner. Father, we thank you, God, for the work that you're doing in their lives as they are newly was married three months. Father, we pray, God, that your presence is so strong with them, God, as you grant them vision and direction for the next few years, Lord, as they move forward, God, in the direction and the places that you are calling them forth to. So we lift up the gardeners to you. Father, you are so good. We thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before, um, <clears throat> can you take this too? Before we have um, Pastor Q come up and give us the word, I will invite Elder Danny to come up here for a special announcement. Hi, everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, can we have the youngest pastor come to the front here? Pastor Jason and his wife, Hannah. The youngest. Hannah, come too. Hannah, come too. Hannah, come. So, um... Pastor Jason, he is uh, our youngest pastor here, um, and he's about to turn, Hannah, come, come, um, turning 40 soon, but um, I want to honor him, come to the Hannah, come, so, so his birthday is coming up uh, the 15th, right, 14th, okay, so we want to honor him on behalf of Hope Church, thank you, thank you for being um, a great pastor, and a great pastor's wife. Um, so, but um, just la this last couple months, uh, Pastor Jason and Hannah have 
really blessed us. Our youth group has exploded, right? And they filled the need of being the pastors of our youth and really um, showing how to love God and how to walk in um, his ways and love his people. So let's just, uh, everyone lift, let's uh, raise our hands and I'm going to pray for uh, Pastor Jason and Hannah. So God, we just thank you for Pastor Jason and Hannah, Lord Father God. We thank you for this mighty couple, Lord Father God, who have blessed us, Lord Father God, that has filled the need for our youth, Lord Father God, and just uh, pastors who love our children and showing them the way that how to love you and love your people. I pray that you will continue to fill them from head to toe and you will bless them in every way. And may you continue to show just your goodness and your heart and you protect this family, Lord. And uh, may you continue to grow inside of them, Lord, Lord. And we thank you and we love you. We thank you for this uh, couple and we thank you for Pastor Jason, Lord as he celebrates uh, soon to be 40, Lord. And we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, our mission partner who is uh, who will be sharing with us today. Uh, and Dustin has been part of our church over 10 years ago. And uh, while he was as a single, and he went out on a mission, mission, with, uh, mission training with YWAM a number of years ago, and he was called to go into missions. And five years ago, he went out to Kansas City with YWAM. That is, I think, finished the fifth year, right? Entering the sixth year. Yeah, entering the sixth year. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's been part of our uh, mission partners and for the last five years, and he's here today. Um, now he's here as a married person, okay, okay, and he's here, he's going to share with us what God is doing, has been doing in his life, and also what God is leading him to as well. Yes, so good to, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so good. It's always so good to be here, and obviously getting to be here for the first time with my wife. Just love coming to Hope. Uh, yeah, I just want to even honor Pastor Q, Pastor Mimi, and Pastor Jason, although you're a more recent official pastor. Like, we've tracked for a while, and I love coming here because, yeah, I just... It's, it seems like it's becoming more and more rare to come to a church or a fellowship of believers that really believes in the power of prayer, the inner working of the Holy Spirit, and is still so deeply rooted in the Word. So it's great, so great to be here. We're actually here through October, well, through September. So hoping to definitely connect with you guys some more, but I'm going to hand it off. To Holly, and she's just going to talk about our last couple of months, and yeah. It's so, so good to be with you all this morning. It's really fun just to get to meet some of the ones that have been so important to Dustin and his journey of faith, and so, um, yeah, just thanks for having us this morning. Yeah, so we have just been so grateful to the Lord for how he has led each of our lives individually and now joining us together in marriage. And we were married three months ago, May 21st, praise God. And uh, we went on a honeymoon to Portugal, which was just a wonderful way to start our life together. And then we went back to Kansas City, where we are now um, establishing our home, settling in our little apartment, and jumping into full-time ministry with 111 Global. And so we are just really thrilled for all that the Lord has uh, had us do these last couple of months. We actually were recently able to go to my hometown in northwest Arkansas. We did a ministry trip down there, and we were able to minister at the house of prayer that I was a part of for many years, actually before I moved to Kansas City. 
and we were able to do some teaching, some training, some worship and prayer labs with this fellowship, and uh, they were just so encouraged and blessed and strengthened. We actually had a testimony from the lady who began the ministry. She'd actually been in ministry for like 30 plus years, and she said, I just understand why we do worship and prayer like in a new way. Like I feel like I've been encountered by the Lord and refreshed and restored. And the skills that you've given us, like I really understand more about the Lord's heart for the nations and what he's doing and his plan for the earth. And so uh, we were really encouraged by her testimony and the testimonies of others as well. We were able to go to my home church in Arkansas and minister there, and they were also really encouraged. It was just a blessing to be able to introduce my new husband to people who had been so important in my life as well. So it was a recent ministry trip we did, and we also are getting to work alongside a team that we have recently uh, stationed in the San Francisco Bay Area, where they are working with a Chinese church, which is directly impacting the underground church in China. And so we're getting to interface through Zoom with leaders of the underground church. We're getting to encourage them, equip them, strengthen them for the mission of God uh, right here from the state. So it's just an amazing uh, thing that we get to be a part of. And that's kind of, that's been our last few months. Yeah, and so we are part of a ministry called 111 Global, which had a few people ask, like, are you still in missions? Are you with YWAM? What's with all the numbers? Like that sort of thing. Um, So the name actually comes from the promises found in Malachi 1.11, which says, for from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations, and in every place incense will be offered to my name. In a pure offering, for my name will be great among the, na- among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. And so 111 Global was formed out of a, a deep conviction and a belief uh, that lines up just with the promises. And so I love this passage because it talks about the Lord's name being made great in the nations, but in that we see the, there's a requirement of a pure offering, of a, a offering of praise, a, of worship. I love how in Revelation it talks about Jesus is coming back for a pure and spotless bride, and how many of us in church have often not felt pure nor spotless, like we're so weak, our praise is so weak, but there's this promise in Scripture of a pure and spotless bride, of a pure offering, is what the Lord is coming back to. And so 111 formed out of the leadership team at the International House of Prayer with really a desire to equip and train and bring the church into that maturity of being pure and spotless, of making the earth ready for Jesus' return. And along with that, equipping houses of prayer, missional communities, to be missional, to go out, to not just pray pray for the hands of feet to come, oh Lord, send the man of God, send the man to woman somewhere, but being actually, I've been reborn, I've been made new, and so I'm going to go out because I can't keep this to myself. And so we deeply value gospel messengers being raised up, going, preaching the good news, seeing people come into salvation, We've both been part of YWAM and worked with them for years now. But along with that, we really deeply value the discipleship process of being conformed into the image of Christ, having our mind renewed. And we recognize it's, it's not just having someone come to you, hearing it once, and then, all right, I'm perfect, I'm ready, take me up to heaven. But it's an ongoing, lifelong process of, Lord, mold me make me into someone who's more like you, make me ready for your coming. And so we are currently still based in Kansas City alongside the same YWAM base that I've been at the last six or seven years. And so when we're in Kansas City, we are either meeting together, we're worshiping, we're praying, we're ministering to the Lord first, 
were training missionaries there. We're equipping them for a sustained life of worship, of prayer, of missions, of obedience. And then we also go. And so it might be Arkansas. It might be the underground church. It might be San Francisco. Uh, she spent some time in Mexico doing a training there. I was just in Brazil while I was engaged, which I don't recommend, but amen. <laughs> The Lord sent us and did amazing things, but so we're either in Kansas City, worship, praying, training missionaries, or we're going to other missional communities, and we're teaching them to do the same, to obey all his commands and make the earth ready for his coming. And so that's 111 in a nutshell. We'll be here the next month, basically, um, and we're really looking forward to just strengthening our team and communities that have sent us. We really want to spend some of the early weeks and months of our marriage sowing into communities. So we're excited to connect. We've talked a little with Joy about getting connected to the house church. So, so good to be with you guys and looking forward to connecting more. Father, we thank you. We are yours. We belong to you, God. We long for the day. The whole earth will be filled with your glory. The glory of your name will cover the earth as waters cover the earth, God. We ask right now, Father, we lift up Dustin and Holly, God, as you have called them, as they have said yes to you. But as you lead and guide them, May you be honored and glorified in them, through them. Oh, God, that nations will come to see you. Nations that you, nation that you do not know will run to you, Lord, you said, Isaiah 55, 5. We ask your grace over them. Not only you will meet all their needs, but also we ask you will strengthen them, anoint them, and guide them. God, Lord, you said, Spirit of the Lord, God is upon me because he's anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He sent me the bind of the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to comfort all those who mourn. We ask your grace over them, your anointing over them. As they go, God, your strength will bring about many who will run with them to see your glory come. We lift up your name. You fill them with your joy. And you will also grant lives and many lives in them, both physically as spiritually, God. We give you glory in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We need to, I need to stick that in there. We believe in multiplication. Every form of the way. Amen. God is good. All the time. It's, it's, it just feels you know, sort of weird because I haven't preached, uh, spoken for about a month or so. And now I'm beginning to get back to sharing the word. And now, I don't know if you remember, we were uh, going through the Gospel of Luke. It started probably in February. And we are really looking and looking to encounter our Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior of the world. And we have sort of, we will get back to, the, uh, get back, get back to that uh, schedule as well. You know, we are going back to Gospel of Luke right now. Before I begin, um, today is 9-11. Some of, some of you are too young to understand what 9-11 was. You know, and a lot of us, I remember that day 9-11, it was Tuesday. I remember I was planning to go on a, about a 10-day fasting uh, vacation, fasting prayer. Something happened in the church that really shook me. I just needed time to pray. And I asked the church to give me a couple of weeks off. So I was going to go to Virginia Beach. And I was, you know, you know by September Hotels are really sparse, you know, and, and we were able to get cheap hotels those days. And I remember Tuesday I wanted to leave. My wife called me about, about 8 in the morning. Did you see the news? Maybe 8 30. Did you see the news? What? And it's like, look. And I, I opened the TV, turned the TV on. First thing I saw a plane, second plane, flying into that uh, World Trade Center in New York City. The well, first one was already burning and everything. And, See, that's the second plane, and when not, I remember whole 
day, everything was a lockdown, things were going to be, heard the news about other planes that going in, in Pennsylvania, one that came to D.C. with hitting the Pentagon and everything else. It was a chaotic day, 9-11. There are certain days, moments in our lives seem to change a lot of things. 9-11 changed a lot of things in our lives. I want to ask you something that I don't know if you ever thought about it. What did God speak to you out of 9-11? We all hear about, remember 9-11, but what did God speak to you out of 11, 9-11? I don't know if you ever thought, what did God speak to you out of it? Did, did you only hear the bad things that came out, or did you hear what God says out of that place, out of 9-11? I'm not trying to answer anything, but what about 2020? I bet you down the line, maybe years down the line, it, no, 2020 will be known as year of pandemic. What has God been speaking to you out of 2020? I remember that at the beginning of the 2020, Pastor Jason talking about 2020 vision. Remember that? 2020 vision. I don't know if it, this, I'm sorry, I'm going up a little bit off tangent here, but do you think about the number? I love numbers. That 9 11 happened on 9 11. 9 11 is an emergency number, help number, right? On the day that plane crashed in an all that, and 2020, we talk about 2020 vision. And, and yet, something happened on, and, uh, in a, to, 2020. We are still, they haven't fully come out of it. What has God been speaking to you, speaking to you out of it? What, have you been, what has God been speaking to you? I know what God has been speaking to the church as a whole, and Pastor Mimi and I, at least we are, that's what we've been really looking at. 2020, out of COVID, all that, reminded us, that really more than anything else, the kingdom of God is a family. That we need one another. And I really believe God, the 2020, God was giving us clear vision of what we are called to be, what we are supposed to be as a church. We are supposed to be the family of God that gathers the loves and worshiping God and whatnot. And we, in 2020, we, out of 2020, really came out 9 9 this Friday. It will be a, I want you to know, nine, down the line, 9 9 will be known as the day that hope became homes. House became homes. 9 9 is the day where we started our house churches launched this past Friday, saying that church is more than Sunday, coming in corporate gathering, church is lived out every day as a body of Christ, and it is in homes, and that hope, house of prayer for everyone, is also to be homes of prayer for everyone. I'm trying to stick one more thing there. I thought, I know 912 means nothing to you. 912 means a lot to me. Exactly seven years ago tomorrow, 9-12, I had a stroke. Doing, you know, doing wedding rehearsal Saturday morning. I had a stroke in front of the people who were getting married the next day, seven years ago. And I remember, what did God speak to me out of that? What did God speak to me? Did I hear what God was saying? The things that I learned at the time, yes, life is more, I'm mortal. Life is short, and, and all that, and some of the things that I learned, God spoke to me about, that am I still living, am I, did I hear it correctly, am I living by it? All, all this to say, not, to, not to, to talk about, are we hearing God? Are we hearing God in the midst of all of our lives? Are we hearing God, are we walking by? Now, I know hearing is different from listening. Today's text is from uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 4 to 15. Some of you who have been tracking with me, maybe, maybe one person may say, what about verse 1 to 3? You didn't talk about 1 to 3. We'll come back to you sometime down the line. Luke 8, 4 to 15, I want to look at. Let me just read the passage first, okay? I'm reading from NASB. We have the words up here. If let's all stand. Let's read the word. Let's read. This is the word of the Lord. Let's read it together. Let me read. You can follow along in the Bible up there as well. You can follow along in your own 
Bible, your, your, your version that you use. This, uh, verse 4, when a, when a large crowd was coming together and those from the various cities were uh, journeying to him, the soul went out to sow the seed and he sowed and some fell beside the road and it was trampled on the, on the foot and the birds of the air, bird, birds of the air ate it up. Other, other seed fell on the rocky soil, and as soon as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. And some fell into, into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. And as he said these things, he called out, He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Let me start right there. Why don't, why don't you be seated? Let me start right there. We'll continue with the next verse. I'll read a little later. Let me pray. Father, we come right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come today as we worship you, God. We didn't come to just hear some words. We come to meet with you. We come to worship you. God, behold your glory and face. We want more than a nice teaching. We want more than a nice words. We want your presence, your word that comes, lives among us, God. We want to see your face. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Use even me, God, your word will come forth. We will see your face, hear your voice, and fall in love with you all over again. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. I didn't read the rest of the passage for clear, some reason, not just to save time, just help as well. Let me begin by uh, saying, um, in verse 4, it really begins with, uh, it says, a lot of people gather. Actually, in Gospel Mark, it said, such a large crowd gathered, there was no place for Jesus to stand. Jesus got into a boat in the, in the, in, in the water to begin to teach people. And in, in the ministry of public ministry of Jesus, probably this was where most number of the people were gathered to see Jesus. This, this rabbi, teacher from Nazareth, small town in, you know, in, 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 in Nazareth, went around proclaiming the kingdom of God is here. And he was healing, and he was casting out demons, declaring and manifesting, manifest and bringing manifestation of God's kingdom come by the power and the glory of God. And therefore, a lot of people gathered. People gathered because of the miracles they saw. They saw people getting healed. They, and all that they came, people came from all over the place, it says in verse 4. All the people came. And, and the thing is, you do not, and, 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 and these are people, a lot of people come, it's a good thing, right? But it seems that when I look at this passage, Jesus doesn't seem to be thrilled at all. And Jesus began to tell them a parable. Parable is an earthly story with heavenly meaning. Sometimes it illustrates easier to understand things of God, but sometimes it's enigmatic. It is very puzzling. It's difficult to understand. But Jesus began to tell them a parable. The, the, the parable really was everybody's listening, waiting for him to speak some amazing truth, some uh, word of God. And Jesus, he says, well, a, there was a farmer, he went out, began to sow the seed. Some of the seed fell on the, uh, on, on the path, and the birds came in and ate it up. Some fell on the, and, 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 you know, and, and talks about, fell on the uh, rocky soil, and it grew up quickly, and, 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 and this, but when the sun came, scorched, it withered away. Some fell on the you know, the, among the thorn bushes, it grew, it began to grow, but the, 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 the thorn bushes choked it, it couldn't bear fruit. And others fell on the good soil, and he had hundredfold harvest. He stopped right there. And he says, he who has ear to hear, let him hear. And he goes and sits down. Message is done. 
Really, that's what happened. Message is done. People are all scratching. What is he talking about? And they, people said, walk away. That's what happened. He told a parable. They came to listen to a, some God's teaching word. That's all he told of a parable. And he sat down and walked away. And people are beginning to walk away. Parable. But this was an important one because in, in, when disciples have been, in verse, actually, go, let, me, let me go on to the next verse. Uh, verse, um, I am totally off my script here. In the verse 9, the disciples came and said, Jesus, what does this mean? Why are you speaking to them in parables? That's what they, they, what they says to Jesus. Verse 9, Jesus says, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is in parable, so that they hear, but, and they, so they see, but they do not see. But the hearing, they do not understand. Jesus said something very interesting. He said, I'm speaking to, to, to them in parables so that they see but do not really see. They hear but they don't really hear. But to you, it has been granted a privilege to understand the mystery of the kingdom of God. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus is saying, I didn't tell the parable to make it easier, more than parables so they will be more typical. But those will not listen, understand. Interesting, right? This is what Jesus is saying. The crowd, people came for many different reasons. People came, and, and I know when, when you come to church on Sunday, and I, when, when you come, what are you expecting to hear? What are you expecting on Sundays? What do you expect? And people came for many different reasons. I bet you some came to see miracles. Some came to be healed. Some came even to oppose Jesus. Some came because this is the best show in town. You know, one day Jesus, you know, you know one, one, one day Jesus fed the thousands with five loaves and two fish. After that, Jesus told a story saying, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you will not enter heaven. People got upset. What is he talking about? Eat his flesh and drink blood? Yuck! Everybody walked away. Everybody walked away. Who can understand this thing? Everybody walked away except 12. Jesus said, do you want to go away too? Jesus, and and, and, and they, they, Peter says, if you, you have the, if you have life, where would you go? You see, Jesus was not always thrilled about the great crowd. And because out of the crowd, he, and, and he knew there are many who are not really listening. Many, many who, who are not really Hearing, seeking God. And, and it says, when Jesus said, you, to you it has been granted, what does it mean? I thought about a few things. One, and, it, and it's uh, because, you know, the revelation comes through relationship. When I get to know somebody closer, they will share their stories with me. You know what I mean? Revelation comes through relationship. Relationship allows me to come and ask you things. Intimacy. You see, Disciples were able, because of their commitment to Christ, the trust in him, you're able to come. Jesus, what does it mean? What is he saying? What, what do you mean? They get to ask him. Revelation comes through intimacy. Revelation comes through, you know, the relationship. Second thing is that they got to ask. You know, the, you know the, who, who are the good students at, in the classes? Those who ask questions, Right? Teachers, isn't that right? Some of them are, they ask too many questions, they're pestering you too much, but good students ask questions. Because that means you are interested about the subject, you want to know. It is to those who want to know, Jeremiah 29, verse 13, it says, if you seek me and, and, and if you seek me and search for me, you'll find me. If you search with, with all your heart, if you seek after God with all our heart, he said, I'll be found by you. Many came not really seeking him. Many came for little bread, little miracle. They were not really seeking Christ at all. Jesus is telling them a parable to talk about. Are you listening? Jesus said, if you have an ear to hear, let him hear. Do you have ear to hear? Yes, I do. Some of you may need a hearing aid, like me. 
I, th I think I only I think hear about 80% of things. And they will say, did you hear what I said? You know, how many of you, husbands, your wife says, you are not listening. Why don't you listen? Right? How many of you, you know, young people, you know, your, parent, your mom says, are you listening? Did you hear what I say? We are hearing, but we are not really listening. It's, but that, I think this is what God is saying to us. Are you hearing? Are you listening? Now, verse 10 and on, Jesus begins to, because they're asking, he, give, he, he begins to give them explanation. The key is this. The key to this parable is the seed is the word of God. You see, when you hear just about farmers sowing the seed, what does it mean? It can mean all kinds of things. When Jesus gives us key, key is the seed is the word of God. That's the key. Seed is the word of God. Who is sowing? At this point, Christ is sowing the, Christ is sowing the seed. And down the line, when disciples go and preach the gospel, they will be sowing the seed. As we share the gospel with those around our neighbors, we are sowing the seed. You see, when, the, when, the, when you sow the seed, seed, some of them, and they fall into four different soils or four different hearts, four different places. First of all, he says, it fell upon the, um, sorry, I am off my script here. Okay. Those, those, those beside the road are those who have heard, then the, who have heard. See, that some of the seed fell on the roadside, by the roadside, not in the ground on the roadside. In those days, when you, when, you have a, when you have a field, when you're farming, you, in the middle you have a little rose, a path they make so that they can go and water and do the work. There are the little path. In those paths, the seed fall. The, the path is very, very hard. You know, and when the seed falls, he has no chance to ever get it in there. So now the seed out there on the, on the top of the path, the birds come and eat it. The words have no place, the path, chance to ever get into their part, person's life at all. He cannot go in there to do anything. There are people, he said, there are people whose heart is like this path. And, and what happens? Then the devil comes, takes the word away from their heart. So they cannot understand, they cannot receive it. So that they will not believe and be saved. If you believe in, if you believe and trust in Jesus, you will be saved. But because the Satan takes the words away, he cannot go and you cannot be saved. The word comes, and you know, and you know, and you can, it doesn't go in at all. What, what are the what are the souls? What are the hearts like that? Sometimes you come to church, you know, and you see Pastor Christ. I don't like that. I don't like him. I don't. I'm not going to listen. Something it happens. You know, and, and, you know, and, oh, he's being political. I don't want to listen to a political message. Whatever it might be. You know, I remember when I was little, when I began to go to church, my father was a nominal Catholic. He thought all the Protestant pastors were money grabbers. They all asked him about money. And my father would never listen to me. He would, he would used to burn Bibles and would not, would not let me go to church. So it's, you know, some, there are reasons why where your heart is hardened, you are not going to accept at all. You, it, it may also be that you may be some hurt in your life where, and I'm not going to listen. I don't need God. Whatever it might be, you're rejecting the word does not get into you. So it has no time to ever get into you. That's the hardened heart. Not even, not even they, don't, they don't even entertain the thought. No place to land. Then Jesus talks about second soil. He says, on the rocky soil are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no, and these have no firm root. They believe for a while, and in time of trial or temptation, they fall away. In, 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 in Israel, some of the grounds will be underneath, is under the little soil will be limestones. The little soil, but so the seed falls, the little soil to begin to grow something, but there's no room to put the roots in. So when, when, when it begins to grow quickly, but when the sun comes up, scorching sun comes, and there's no root, cannot get any moisture, it dries up, withers away. 
There are people like that who, when the word comes, they get excited about it. Yes, I, I love it. And I will do anything. I'll do, I love it. I want it. And after a while, what did I sign up for? What did my mom say? What did my friends say? Never thought about, deep thought about it. And then when difficulty comes, you walk away, you fall away. And the word has you know, barely touched something, but it didn't, cannot go bear any food in there. It just withers away. And after a while, this is a second, second soil, or I, I call it shallow heart. And often we have, you know, I've seen this enough where sometimes you have some kind of conference or not, and all your friends are there. I'm with my friends, and they're getting really blessed. And the atmosphere is so good. I get sort of carried away with emotions. I feel like something really happened for me as well. I get excited, but it didn't really come into me. It didn't really get into me yet. I'm going with everybody else. But when time, time comes to really evaluate, do I, do I really believe this thing? I fall away. There are many like that who will do that. Third soil is, is Jesus says, the seed that fell among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard, and as, as they go on their way, they are choked with worries and riches and pleasure of this life and bring no fruit to maturity. These are what you call, I, I, I should find a better way, infested heart or preoccupied, something else is already in the ground. You know, my mother-in-law loves gardening. I do not know what joy she finds, but she finds joy she does every day, three hours in the ground. You know, and I remember every, every spring, every spring she would say, ask me to come and help. And one of the first things she does is help ask, her, ask me to use either those pitchfork things to turn the ground, you know, and to turn the, turn the uh, soil, whatever. And, and, you know, something you do this, whatever, and, and all that, you know. And, and then you, you get all the rocks out, you all the, you know, the weeds out, you know, and then you put some fertilizer on the thing. This is a ground soil where there was a lot of things already living, ready to go in there. It may be already weeds, already bushes over in it. The seed fall in it. It has emotion, it, it, it room enough to still grow, but... You know, it is competes with the bush and the weeds. You know, weeds go faster. Weeds can last more longer. And so that this, this seed is growing, cannot get enough nutrients. It barely grows, cannot bear any fruit. And talks about here, those are where the already, heart is already occupied. Things are already in it. And, and the, the riches in this world, pleasures of this life, and, and different things in, in, in our lives, that's, chokes the word of God that, can, that they're supposed to go in. It cannot grow. It cannot bear fruit. It looks like plant is there, but no fruit. There are many like that. They hear the God's word come, God's promise come. They receive it. But there's so many other things that are distracting me you know, and so that I don't get to see any maturity in it. And this happens. And uh, and the fourth is probably the best thing here. It says, and the, the seed in the good soil, the seed that fell on the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word. They, they all heard the word and how they are responding to the word. And in honest and good heart, it talks about the heart here, honest and good heart, and holds on to the word and perseveres it so that it will bear fruit. This is a heart that is good, prepared heart. You know, and just like my mother-in-law, you prepare the heart, you, get, you turn up the ground, you, 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 what you call, plow the ground, and you take all the weeds out, all the stones and the rocks out, and then you have enough room for the, the seed to come in, you know, and, and it begins to grow, and you hold on to that word, and you persevere, persevere until he bears fruit. These are the good heart. Plow the ground, remove all the stones, remove all the weeds and bushes. Persevering heart, know it, he knows the cost. 
and understands God's word, holds on to the word, lives with the word, waits until it, it produces, receives a lot in harvest. What's the result? Hundredfold growth. In Mark, it talks about 30, 60, 100 fold. So you bear fruit, and that's the result. And you talk, uh, here, Jesus is talking about those who listen, those who heard the word of God. What, uh, what, what is the word doing into your, in, in your life? Have, do you have a room enough for the word to move, move into you and work in your life? And does it grow? Can you bear fruit? question is, are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing fruit? And the question is, what kind of soul are you? What kind of soul are you? Does the word come? There's no room to land? Does the word have room to come, but not enough to really go deep? Does the word come? And you know, it, it, it can come in, but you're so distracted by so many other things. It cannot really change my life. Or do you have room enough where the word of God comes and begins to dig deep, begins to transform your life, begins to bring, bring fruit in your lives? And often, often I thought, often I thought, he's talking of four different kind of, kinds of heart, different kinds of people. That is true, but it also says something else. You know how often sometimes my heart is, goes all four back in, in one day? Sometimes this all four things happen in me sometimes. I come in the morning on the way to church. I had a fight with my husband, not my wife. I'm not really, I don't want to listen to anything. <laughs> Words does not get there. You know what I mean? And it happens sometimes you go, you know, and, and maybe you go to a meeting and Good praise come. Oh, I love it. You feel something, but later as you walk out, somebody stepped on you, sh goes away. You know, in the afternoon, and you know, after, after you know, I heard what God is saying or not, and, you know, and you, you say, oh, yeah, I need to do that, but I need to give my rights to my kids. I need to do all that, and maybe I'll do it later. You see, this sometimes I think I go through all this in one day, in one, one day and different times. It is, it can be generally different types of people, but it can also be me, state of my attitude, my heart. The question is, am I listening? Am I hearing the word of God? You see, the word of God, it takes effort to understand. It is me that I need to come and understand. God, I need to know you. Teach me, God. We grow in that, in that thing. You see, the seed is the seed, the word is the same. It's not so, it's the same soil. But only thing different is the soil. It's not about the soil, it's not about the seed. It is my heart, the soil that changes everything. Am I receiving the word? Am I listening to the word of God? I was reminded I was doing a teacher's devotion this morning. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. How did he create it? By word. Jesus, God said, let there be light, and it was so. God created heaven and the earth through his word. His word has power to change. His word has power to bring life in us. Yeah, his word has power to cast, dispel all the darkness. His word has power. The word is living and active, sharper than it stretched sword. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It is word of God. When he comes and he receives, it changes our lives. It brings about all that God wants to grant us blessing. That is what, what he meant by bearing fruit. And see, all that is in the word of God. How am I listening? How am I receiving? How am I, how am I receiving the word? That changes everything. And interestingly, in next, I, I didn't read it. Next few verses, Jesus tells a parable and says, in verse, uh, I believe, I believe verse 18, it says, So take care how you listen, how you hear. Take care how you listen, how you hear the word of God. For the one who has, 
What happened? The PowerPoint disappeared on me. To the one who has, more will be given. The, ones, the one who has not, even what he thinks he has, will be taken away. You know, the muscle, if you do not use your muscle, if it atrophies, right? When I work on my muscle, my muscle grows. When I listen to the word of God, when I obey it, when I live by it, it blossoms and it grows more. If I do not live by the, if I do not walk by the word of God, that whatever, whatever thing that I thought I had, it will be lost as well. And finally, Jesus says in that same passage, goes on to talk about who is my, my mother and my brothers? They are those, those are the ones who hear the word of God. And through them, the family of God, the kingdom of God is about those who would listen to the word of God and obey the word of God. That, that's the family you're called into. I'm almost done. I think. God is good. The word of God is living and active. You see, this is a, what, what amazes me as a pastor. I hear the same word that goes and changes people's lives, and yet to some people nothing happens. What happened? It's, it's, it's God, God is, it's not the preacher. It's about the word and how you as a person receives it and responds to it. But hearing is worth, worthless if it does not result in doing. Attention to God's word must be coupled with a willingness to do it. The truth or, or the truth of it, it all will fade away. Has God's word impressed you? To, that you must forgive? Do it. Has God's word impressed you to confess your sins and apologize? Do it. Has God's word impressed on you to, that you must speak the truth regardless of consequences? Then do it. Has God's word impressed you that you must stop doing certain things? Do it. Has God's word impressed you that you must make a gift? Do it. Has God's word impressed on you that you must bear witness to your relatives, your acquaintances? Do it. Has God's word impressed on you that you must leave all to serve him? Do it. As, or if you realize that you are a soil other than the good soil, what do you do? This, this parable, this story doesn't really tell us how, but the answer is repent and turn back to him. Believe in him without delay. You know, you know repent, turn to him. Let God plow your heart. Let God, you know, with God, you know, get rid of these things and let God begin to plant in you the eternal word, life in your soul to produce the spirit of Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, abundantly in, in your life. There's a song that I've been really and loving these. There are two songs I've been loving these, these mornings. One is Send Me, the other one is Move My Heart. And the song that the Send, which, which, which she sang last week, which I love, it said in the chorus it says, If I'm known by how I love, let my life reflect how much I love you. I love you. And before you even ask me, even before you even ask, before you even ask, all my answer will be yes. You see, here, the one who obey listens is God. My heart is yes. Whatever you say, even before you ask, yes, God. That's the heart that is open. That heart is ready to let the word grow in you, in us, and the word will blossom in us bring about life you know, and transformation in us. That's our God. That's our God. Let's, let's, why don't I praise him come? You're going to have a communion today. What kind of soul are you? Are you bearing fruit? See, First Sunday of each month, we do communion, but 
That's what we are doing in second, second week. You know, we are reminded the sacrifice, and the love our Lord God manifests for us and how he poured out his grace that gave us life, a life abundant. You know, and, and, and that's what you're celebrating today. And the word of God that his life comes to us when you say yes to him. Our hearts are prepared. Let God abundantly grow in it. And uh, um, raise your heart. Let's all stand for a second.